four years on YouTube. It's been a wild, wonderful ride. The past four years have been packed full of all sorts of developments. COVID, an attempted coup, wars in the Ukraine, Sudan, and Gaza. What a wild ride this has been. What have these past four years been like for you? Rich and fulfilling or empty? A little bit of both, maybe? On the personal side, I've been through a lot. Developing heart arrhythmia issues. Navigating the choppy waters of retirement decisions. Yup, I might look like a 20-something. That's the magic of video. YouTube is one thread that runs through the past four years of my life. So what have I learned in the midst of all this, and will this change in the future? I like to call myself a reluctant YouTuber. I've been teaching online classes since around 2010, and I always felt guilty about the quality of videos I was producing for my students. I'm very fortunate to have some incredible students. They put in an incredible amount of time, money, and effort into the courses I teach. And as a result, I always really felt that I needed to up my game and make the best possible videos I could for them. Then COVID hit and everything shut down. And YouTube seemed like the best option forward for making videos for my students and being able to teach in multiple situations during the lockdowns. That was a little over four years ago. So what have I learned in the past four years? Well, when I watch other people's videos about what they've learned from YouTube, it's all about the technical side, creating videos, lighting, cameras, or how to advertise or network with other people. And I think all of that's kind of secondary to the thing. It's sort of the nuts and bolts that allows you to do what you do. So what are the big points that I've learned over the past four years of being on YouTube? Number one, it's about the people. I've met so many wonderful people through the YouTube channel, online and in person. And this has been through comments and questions under the videos, email, and serendipitous encounters with people who have seen some of my videos in person. These are always so surprising and encouraging. Or meeting people while making videos. Mike also has a YouTube channel, so tell me what your YouTube channel is. It's mid underscore bike underscore crisis, mid bike crisis. Not just in the US, but around the world as well. Getting encouraging messages or email from people from all corners of the world has really been amazing. So thanks for reaching out. I didn't expect this when I started the channel, and I would definitely rank the people I've met at the top of what I've learned from having this channel. Number two is related to the first point. It's about people. I started the channel as a way to bring better content and value to my students. What came as a surprise is the number of former students who have followed the channel and stayed in contact years later. As Charlie Tremendous Jones, and only a motivated speaker would have a name like that, used to say, you're the same person today as you will be 10 years from now, except for the books you read and the people you meet. Number three, it's not about the money. I didn't start the channel to make money. I did it as a means to expand my teaching and bring value to my students. I know a lot of people think that YouTube is an easy way to make money. Here's a hard fact. It isn't. Making videos takes a lot of hard work and time. When I first started out, I tried to make one or two videos a week. I very, very quickly realized that that is not a realistic schedule. And I've backed off over the years to a more healthy pace of one video every two or so weeks. So how much money have I made off YouTube? Well, it's only a few hundred dollars so far. Not the best return on your investment for this channel or my efforts. I watch a lot of other channels where the creators make their living off YouTube and I wish them the very, very best. Most of them do not make it and many get burned out in the process. Here's what I've realized. It takes a very motivated entrepreneurial type of spirit to make money off YouTube and not many are cut from that piece of cloth. My hat goes out to those who are successful. They absolutely amaze me. Fourth, creativity. My time on YouTube has really sparked my creativity. Since starting the channel, I've taken courses on making videos and videography. Learning the creative side of using cameras, lighting, microphones to communicate, 
editing your script, producing a script, and then editing the video on computer. This whole process of learning how to communicate using video has been so much fun. I don't profess to be a pro at, I'm far from that, I'm a learner. And this is what makes it so much fun. I seem to learn something new with every video. So thanks for all your patience with me as I learn how to do this. So if you've got a creative side to you and you've got material that you can teach and communicate to others, I would highly recommend starting a YouTube channel. Five, biking videos. Surprisingly, my cycling videos are some of my most popular videos. Cycling is a big part of my life, so I hope you like them because it's a way for me to bring a little more of who I am to this channel. I originally posted cycling videos to the YouTube channel as a way for families and friends to experience some of the magic of the places where my wife and I have ridden. The biking videos also break up the content of the channel. It's not just boring theology, big questions about life, the universe, and eternity. Filming outside and making cycling videos has taught me a great deal about making videos because so much of what happens out there is outside your control. A car drives by while you're shooting a shot. Like that. And it ruins your sound. A cloud comes over and changes the lighting for your situation. They're not filmed in my house, but they're outside where just about anything can happen and it teaches me to be flexible and learn how to video in those type of situations. So what are my plans for the channel? After almost 30 years of teaching, I have a lot of content in the proverbial filing cabinets I would like to bring out and put on YouTube. So there's lots of biblical and theological content to come. This summer, my wife and I have some pretty cool bike rides planned. In fact, next week we'll be riding across Missouri on the Katy Trail again, this time with my son and grandkids. Oh yeah, and this is right in the middle of one of nature's greatest shows, the Cicada Get On, when broods 19 and 13 will be hatching and in full force along the Katy Trail. But I know bugs, I've lived in the Amazon for almost a year. So I'm kind of excited to see what this great show of nature has to offer us that was last presented when Thomas Jefferson was president. Some of the content that I have in the proverbial following cabinet is a series I did for academia.edu on how to make videos for teachers. Now I have had a lot of students and fellow faculty and others ask about how to create videos or how I shot something. So I hope to port that video series over to YouTube. But here's the thing that's surprising in regards to creating videos and it should have been obvious to me. As a professor, I've had to learn how to write, research, and present information, but I never had any instruction on how to create videos for teaching. And I don't know of any schools that teach this or look for it as a skill when they are hiring new faculty. Yet with online education, these just seem to be skills that every instructor should have at a basic level. So if you teach or know someone who does, or you just want to learn the nuts and bolts of how to create videos, I hope this series is a great help and encouragement to you. So watch for them to start in the next month. I give the date because that's going to force me to get them done. Well, these are my musings. It's been a wild and wonderful ride, and I really appreciate all of you who have been part of this journey. Until we meet again, peace.